because I had a bowel blockage in the beginning and because I was so filled with, with fluid so known as a malignant ascites, I literally had no place to put food or beverage. And so whatever I put in would come back out or cause excruciating pain. And it wasn't coming out the other end either. So for two and a half months, I could do manage only tiny sips of water and herbal tea. So when Dr. Longo's work started coming out in you know, 2010, 12, 13, I was so happy to see this because he's like, then if you take fasting and you pair it with chemo, then you get like a synergy, like a double whammy, and you protect those healthy mitochondria from the damaging effects of that chemo or of that radiation is that we could be making start of care work better, better outcomes for the patient, better quality of life for the patient, lower recurrence and progression of disease. And not, and not needing all the side drugs that cause even more problems like constipation and high blood sugar, et cetera, they give along with the chemotherapy to deal with the side effects of the chemotherapy. The fasting in and of itself is dealing with those side effects. There was a study, maybe you know the study that showed, what was it, a 70, less than 70% chance of um, reoccurring breast cancer when the patients fasted for 13 hours or more each day. And the craziest part about that, they didn't ask the women, what are you eating? But they were simply taking a break for 13 hours or longer every day. Get your hands on everybody after chemo and radiation and surgery and fast them for 13 hours a day. Wouldn't that be incredible to see what would happen at the five-year rate and all the different things we're looking at? I think it would change the game quite drastically. Absolutely. For folks that are new to this, that are pretty metabolically broken, who are the ones who say, oh, I really struggle going more than a couple hours without food. I start to do things like just slowly lowering their carbohydrate intake and slowly upping their quality fats. And then bringing on things like herbal teas, like cinnamon, adding cinnamon to everything. Mm -hmm. Cinnamon is excellent at stabilizing blood sugar. It also has a natural sweet flavor to it. So a lot of people like can give sweetness to things that otherwise doesn't have it. So if they make a homemade whipped cream, for instance, sprinkle a bunch of cinnamon on that, and it kind of makes it taste like it has sugar in it when it doesn't have, you know, any additional sugars. Really aggressively metabolically broken people, we might have to bring out the big guns like metformin. I can at least use it short term to get them ahead of the curve a little bit, maybe enhance their other therapies. Maybe I'll put them on that through radiation because radiation will not work if your insulin and insulin A and A1C are elevated. I've yet to meet a radiologist who does a full glycemic panel, insulin panel, mm -hmm. insulin growth factor, A1C panel on any of their patients, luckily. Thank God we have a few like Dr. Christy Kesslering, we've got Dr. Brian Lewinda, we've got Dr. Um, Colin Champ, some of these radio oncologists out there, Dr. Lori Hersher. These guys are out there who are absolutely checking their patients, getting them more metabolically flexible and kind of gearing them up for radiation, fasting them through radiation, having them take exogenous ketones 20 to 30 minutes before they get into the radiation. I, I, wanted, to, I wanted to ask you about that. who are new to going low carb or going into ketosis or needing to get primed for a particular chemotherapy or radiation therapy that really does depend on having a low glycemic and low insulin state to have better outcomes, then we want to give them a running start. It will also really nip it in the bud, that horrific carb, blue carb withdrawal that a lot of patients experience. It's going to be that much more protective to the healthy tissue around it. And basically kind of think of the ketone, exogenous ketones as being like the Trojan horse that carries the radiation right into the cancer cell and protects all the healthy sort of members of the community around it. 